Up to 200 people gathered outside of Labour Party HQ in solidarity with Chris Williamson MP Tuesday morning on the 9th of July. The pro-Corbyn progressive group Jewish Voice for Labour were among those at the demonstration calling for Williamson to be reinstated into the party. At a time when it was believed that the National Executive Committee of the Labour Party, the NEC, was determining whether they would uphold or reverse the decision by a three-member disciplinary panel to reinstate the socialist MP. Williamson, who told me that he's been a member of Labour for over 40 years, was suspended by the party's high command after a video surfaced of him telling a local Labour Party chapter that he felt frustrated with his party's failure to stand up against the smears of anti-Semitism. The party has done more to stand up to racism is now being demonised as a racist, bigoted party. And I've got to say, I think our party's response has been partly responsible for that. Because in my opinion, I never have a vote to say, we've backed off far too much. We've given too much ground. We've been too apologetic. Yeah. And we've done more to actually address the scourge of anti Semitism than any other political party. Any other political party. Although the rank and file have come out strongly in favour of Williamson, the parliamentary Labour Party have largely either been silent or come out against him. Members of Jewish Voice for Labour circulated an official statement to the press which called on the NEC to resist pressure from the Parliamentary Labour Party to expel Williamson. The statement based this call on three grounds. Firstly, that Williamson never said that Labour had apologised too much for anti-Semitism. Secondly, that there is no evidence that Williamson set out to gratuitously offend anyone, let alone breach anti-racist laws. And thirdly, that political interference by the PLP should not be able to overturn the decision to reinstate Williamson by a disciplinary panel which was empowered to adjudicate his case, further to recommendations made by the Shami Chakrabati report on racism. After the crowd thinned, I spoke to a number of people who remained past 12 p.m. Rebecca from Brighton was one of them. I'm here to support Chris Williamson because it's an absolute outrage that he was ever suspended for the Labour Party. He did not say anything that should have caused a suspension. He said something that was perfectly reasonable and perfectly blindingly obvious. So why? Why would you do that? Is it more likely because he's a Democrat and he's been campaigning for democracy in the, in the Labour Party? Tony Greenstein, a long-time left-wing and Jewish anti-racist activist, was also there. Uh, so I was expelled last year, uh, and the expulsions, of course, continued one after another. Anti-racist, black anti-racist, Jewish anti-racist, Jackie Walker, Mark Wadsworth is over there, and so on. So I'm here to protest against the re-suspension of Chris Williamson, singling out an anti-racist MP by Tom Watson, who is an open racist, I think is outrageous. And if there was something that you could say face-to-face uh, -face to, say, Jeremy Corbyn or other elements of the party leadership, what would that be? I'd say get yourself a backbone, stand up, stop apologising, uh, don't accept this anti-Semitism nonsense. When they talk about anti-Semitism, what they mean is criticism of Israel and apartheid. You shouldn't buy into their lies. Mark Wadsworth, a former journalist and founder of Anti-Racist Action, independently echoed Greenstein's comments. I'm a supporter of Chris Williamson, who's been an amazing ally of mine uh, since I was expelled. In fact, before I was expelled uh, wrongly by the Labour Party, um, he actually came to my hearing and gave evidence in my favour, along with other MPs, Keith Baz and uh, Clive Lewis. I had an encounter with a right-wing Labour MP at the launch of the Chakrabarti report into anti-Semitism and all forms of racism on June the 30th, 2016, uh, where I observed her working hand-in-hand -hand with a Daily Telegraph reporter. And I called that out, and I was summarily expelled there and then that day by Ian McNichol, the General Secretary. But at that time, 172 right-wing Labour MPs had signed a motion of no confidence in Jeremy Corbyn, so it's in the context of that. If I could speak to the leadership of the Labour Party, I would tell them to get a backbone, uh, that they should stop appeasing, apologising and capitulating to bullies, because that's what the 
uh, gang in the Parliamentary Labour Party are. They will never accept a Jeremy Corbyn-led Labour Party, despite Jeremy being twice elected by the membership, the last time by 60%, which is the largest percentage for any uh, leader in the Western world. And it's appalling that they will not accept that democratic vote. And I say to them, if they don't believe in Labour, they should leave. If they won't leave, they should be deselected. Deanna Rogers, editor of Labour List, reported later in the afternoon that the NEC rejected the decision of the dispute panel to reinstate Williamson and instead sent the case to be heard yet again by yet another three-member panel. The campaign for Chris Williamson responded with a statement the following day, 10th of July, noting their deep concern about the NEC decision to resuspend Williamson as a result of what they say is due, quote, solely as a result of political pressure, end quote. They also quote film director Ken Loach, who said, quote, Williamson defended the party's record against the scourge of anti-Semitism. At no point did he say that those guilty of anti-Semitism should not apologize. The campaign also quoted Israeli historian Ilan Pape, who said, quote, The charges against Chris Williamson are obviously unjust, poorly researched and politically motivated. Many of them come from people who want to confuse Jewish identity with support for Israel. He should be reinstated immediately, and the Labour Party needs to take a more mature approach towards accusations of anti-Semitism. One thing is clear. The battle between the reactionary elements within the Labour Party and their neoliberal and soft-left allies against the left-wing pro-Corbyn and anti-racist elements is indicative of a wider class struggle within British society as a whole. How these cases are dealt with may ultimately determine whether Labour is destined to remain a neoliberal party serving the interests of the UK's higher classes, or whether it will break free and become something different for the first time in generations. For the Interregnum.net, this is Mohammed El Mazi. Subscribe at the Interregnum.net to get notifications of our stories as we publish them, and support our work by a one-off donation or regular subscription via the website.